Alrighty, we are back uh, today with another tutorial. Um, this time we're looking at adding a HUD to the virtual camera. So this is for the 2D virtual camera. Uh, if you're looking for the virtual reality virtual camera, that is not this video. Um, and there's nothing in here for that, so just skip ahead to the other one. Um, but as you can see, we have a HUD at the top of our screen. Um, so going uh, left to right, we have the uh, record status, the record time. Uh, when we are recording. Um, the time code is in the middle, so if you're taking time code in from, say, a Blackmagic device or something over SDI, that that's what that'll be, otherwise it'll just be the current time of your computer. Um, and then on the right we have our smoothing method, if you've done the advanced smoothing tutorials, um, and the lens in millimeters. So, uh, and it's all reactive, as you can see, gimbal, steady cam. Uh, raw, let's go back to smooth, and then if we start recording, take record is not actually open, so it's not going to record anything, but as you can see, it works. Alrighty, so, uh, let us do this. Alrighty, so to do this, we will be using the Unreal's, uh, what's it called? It's like a graphic editor, UMG. I'm not 100% sure what that actually stands for. Um, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and under user interface at the very bottom, we want a widget blueprint. Um, and we're going to name out our camera hood. Like so. So just save it. Um, and uh, to start with, we're actually going to be uh, editing our track camera here um, and adding a few things to it. So this will work with this one or the blueprint one. Um, so this one is being brought up to date with uh, all the current changes or improvements I have. So we've got, um, you obviously at the top, allow the controller input, set the camera view, screenshot, move it around. Got all the advanced smoothing stuff uh, down there as well. And the new lens changing method. And then we also have the start, stop, take recorder. Um, and so what we are going to do to start with um, is actually go from our event begin place. So I'm just going to squeeze that between these two here. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to create our um, HUD. So create uh, widget is the one we want. Spelled correctly, widget. Uh, like so. Uh, and for the class, we are going to use our camera HUD one that we made. Uh, and for the player controller, we're just going to steal the get player controller. Um, onto that, we're going to take the return value and promote it to a variable, uh, which I'm going to call HUD. Um, and we'll connect that into there. Uh, and then from there, we also need the add to viewport. So add to viewport. Uh, and we're just going to drag from there again. And then that can be plugged back into here. Um, and so what this will do is when our game first starts, we're going to be uh, creating the widget and then adding it to the viewport. So we're creating a HUD and then adding it to the viewport, which is very handy. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up some variables specifically for the recording start stop uh, system. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable um, and we're going to call it is recording is recording uh, and we want that to be a boolean uh, and I'm just going to set it twice uh, so I'm going to copy and paste it uh, and all we're going to do is off our uh, start recording and all that sort of stuff down here in the flip-flop uh, all I want to do is I want to set it to true when it is recording and then when it flip-flops to stop recording I'm going to set it back to false like that. Um, lastly, what we need to do is we need to add a timer, um, and that is used for the um, the how long it's been recording for. So we want yet another variable for that. Uh, I'm going to call it a recording time, like that. Uh, we're going to change it to a float value. Um, next thing we need to do, oh, I've, I have it here still. Um, so we need to create a function for this to work. I'm not 100% sure why uh, it's it's sort of used for like a loop, I think. Um, we're not using it for its intended purpose, but it works. So we just create a new function and call it, um, I'm just gonna call it record or rec. Um, there doesn't need to be anything in the function, nor do we need to ever call the function. The function just has to exist. Um, so that's just gonna sit over there. Uh, and so from our is recording, we're gonna drag off a new one and we're gonna call, we're just gonna type timer in. Um, and here we want a set timer by function name. Uh, and so 
uh, on the function name, we just want to write down the function we had there, so rec, uh, and this will start a timer. So this is actually a countdown timer, um, but we will be using this to sort of get an elapsed time. Um, so under time, we have to say what it's counting up to or down from, I guess, uh, uh, and so we need to put a value in there. That can be sort of arbitrary. Um, so I'm going to put, uh, what did I say, 43,000. So you're probably wondering what 43,000 is. Well, there's 43,000 seconds in 12 hours, and I can't imagine recording for more than 12 hours in Unreal at once, so that will work fine. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to drag out from the stop recording and type timer again, and all we want to do is clear timer by function name. Uh, and again, we want to type in our function, and so what this will do is it will just clear this or reset this timer again. That way, when it when we hit record again, it's going to start back at zero. Uh, and so the very last thing we need to do is we need to actually set the variable we made. So that's going to go off the event tick, uh, and we're just going to drag it and then set recording time. And I'm going to put that before all our smoothness. Like so. Now under the recording time, we drag off it and we just type timer again. And we want elapsed time by function name. And as you probably guessed it, type in our function like so. And so that's going to return the uh, how long this timer has been running for, which is what we are going to use to say how long it's been recording for. So that is everything we need to do inside this blueprint. Compile it, save it, you should notice absolutely no difference when you play just that. So next we're going to open our blueprint widget, our widget blueprint, the other way around. So uh, first of all, you'll notice this has two sections to it, so it has the designer and the graph. Um, and so we're going to start in the designer, uh, and this is where you can go nuts with uh, your UI design. Uh, I'm not a UI designer, so... Uh, this probably isn't going to look too great. Um, I'm just going to set up how I had it. So uh, over on the right in the details panel, you can give your each block a name and then its content. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, I think we had uh, the status, record status. So um, oh, that's what I'm going to type, record status. Um, I'm just going to put in temporary placeholder text, which will be standby uh, like that. Next, we want our uh, our recording time. Recording time. Uh, for the placeholder for that, it, I will put the format it uses, which looks like that. Alrighty. Um, next, I'm going to put a time code in the middle. Uh, again, you don't need to. If you don't, you don't really need the time code unless you are using. Uh, some sort of external synchronization. What are these at? Uh, 28. 28. Alrighty. Um, now, for the middle one, what we want to do is we want to change its anchor. So these are all anchored in the corner. And th these anchors just say, hey, uh, sort of tell the text how it scales depending on your resolution and screen dimensions and stuff, um, so pretty handy. Uh, for the anchor for the middle, we're just going to set it to be the middle. Uh, I'm going to change its size to 150, which means then our position should be negative 75. So then it'll be in the exact center. Uh, for our justification, I want it to go out from the middle, uh, and the placeholder for this is going to look like that. Alrighty, and uh, so lastly, we want our smooth method and our lens. Uh, so smooth method. Uh, again, change the anchor to the right, and I'm going to change the justification to the right. Um, I'm just going to put a placeholder. Uh, lens. Like so to the right, and one more um, th uh, millimeters to the right. And that's what we get. So pretty it up however you like. Probably these could probably be moved over a bit, like so, but uh, oh, they're too high. Again, you could spend 
because it's pretty sure this is someone's job at a triple a studio um two oh so i've gone one too far over Boop. there we go Alrighty, beautiful so um compile and save it so at the moment this won't do anything so what we're going to do is we can actually you may have noticed there's bind buttons on all of these so we can bind a blueprint essentially to each of these uh, which is what we're going to do but before that we do that we need to get these variables uh so we're going to switch over to the graph and we're dragging off the event construct so that'll run when it first appears in the world which obviously is when we hit play uh, so to do that because this blueprint doesn't actually exist yet in the world we can't use a public variable to reference our track camera so instead we're going to be using the cast to node uh, so if you just drag off of here and type cast to tracked camera or whatever you named the tracked camera blueprint uh, like so and we're going to cast to node um, then we want to pull off as track camera and promote it to a variable uh, and we're just going to call that variable our um, uh, cam tracked camera reference like so um, so now if we compile it the problem is that the cast to node needs something to cast to it um, this is where things got get can get a bit complicated because it can sort of accept anything and then you know you get problems with oh that's not apparent of that and all sorts of things so uh, what we're going to do is uh, something rather stupid I guess um, we're going to cast itself to itself so what we want to do is we want to get uh, actor of a class like that uh, drag those in Make things nice and neat and then what we want to do is we want to drag grab our tracked camera so now we're casting itself to itself sounds silly as it notes here however that will still let the cast to work um so we can get this reference so if we go back that's all we need to do in the event graph for the entire thing so if we go back to our camera, uh, we're going to start adding functionality to each of these individual things. Uh, so for the time code, that's probably the easiest. So we're going to start with that. So under its content for text, we're going to create a new binding like so. We're going to use the get time code. Uh, there you go, get time code node, quite simple. Um, uh, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to go time to string. Um, so if you plug the time code, it, you can't actually plug it straight into there. Uh, and so the time code to string will format it um, in the way we want with the uh, so, um, oh, thingies there. I drawn a blank. I can't. I can't remember what they're called. Um, and then we're going to convert a string to the text, like so. So I mean, we can test it right now. If we hit play, we get up in the top the time code. So. Next, what we're going to do is um, probably the lens is going to be the next easiest thing to do. Um, so again, we're going to create a new binding for it. Uh, in here, we're going to drag off our track camera reference and we're going to get it. Uh, and then we're going to drag off that and we're going to type get current focal length. I think you have to untick context sensitive. Um, focal. Focal. There we go. Get current focal length. Oh yes, so um, you can't actually reference those two things directly, so we have to get the cinema camera from the tracked camera, like so, and then get its current focal length and convert it a float to a text, like so. Oh, that's annoying. And so now that is gonna get whatever the current focal length is and report it there. Um, with the millimeters, we're not gonna. We're just gonna leave that because every lens sh should be in mils. Um, yet to see one that isn't. Uh, for the tr um, smoothness method, uh, what we're gonna do is create a binding for that. Uh, same thing. We're gonna drag off the current camera, um, drag it off. And so, if you remember, for the smoothness method, we were using a um, string to set it just kept things organized. Um, the other reason is we can reference that directly. So get smoothness method. Um, current smoothness method, that's the one I wanted. Drag that out and convert it to text to string. And so now we're gonna report that. 
Um, so we're on a roll, we've done that side and the middle. Next we're going to do the timer. Uh, so again, we're going to create a binding on the text. Uh, we're going to drag that off, we're going to get the current record time. Uh, get, what do I call it, record time. Get recording time, that's what I called it. Um, this again, we're going to use the time to string. There we go, time code to string. Time code, oh no, sorry, not time code, we want time seconds to string. Um, and again, that is just simply going to format it uh, in the correct way we want. So if, we, if it doesn't, this will literally just be a number counting up to a, a several thousand seconds, I guess. Um, so this will format it as it says to uh, seconds into milli minutes, seconds, milliseconds. Gonna make things a bit easier to read. So lastly is the recording status. Um, and so that is somewhat more complicated. Um, so we're gonna start by creating a binding for the text. Um, over in the left, we're gonna create a new variable and we're gonna call it recording status. And we're gonna change it from a Boolean to a text like so. So we're going to drag our track camera reference out and we're going to get it. Uh, and we are going to get is recording. Here it is, get is recording. Uh, we're going to drag off this and make a branch node and plug that into there. So next we want to drag the record status and we want to set it and we want two of those. So duplicate it. Drag it in, one's going to be true, one's going to be false. Uh, they are both going to go back into the return node. Uh, and then lastly, we want to drag out recording status again, and we want to get it this time, and that is going to be what um, we return. Now, for um, if is recording is true, we're going to set it to be record. If it's false, we're going to set it as standby, like so. So not too complex, but uh, yes. Lastly, we're going to go back into the designer and we're going to bind the color of the text. So personally, I liked the color to change to red when it's recording. Um, I don't know if anyone else does. Uh, so we're going to do it in the same fashion. So we're going to start by creating a variable called record color. Uh, we're going to change this one to, it's called a slate color. There it is, slate color. Uh, we are going to get our track camera reference. Uh, we are going to get record, no, get is record, is recording, drag off into a branch, like so, using that as the condition, we're going to get record color, we're going to set it twice, like so, drag it there, true and false, both back into the return node. Uh, Boat, there we go. And then we're gonna get the color and we're gonna do it here. Uh, and so for these, we're just gonna drag off like that, turn on context sensitive and click make slate color. Uh, so when it's not recording, I want it to be white. And when it is recording, I want it to be red. Like so, compile and save. And so now, now we're done. So using those methods, you can add more information on here if you want. Something about the focus, the aperture, um, pretty much any variable, um, you know, you can convert into this text to uh, display here. So, uh, you know, but um, I think just the simple, the basics, you know, it's enough for me. So uh, if we hit play, um, there we go. Oh, hello, there we go. And so now, as you can see, we have everything works. We've got the stand, it says standby, switch to record and it counts up. I hit the button again, it says standby. Um, and then if we do it again, it starts from the start. Um, I can switch to the different smooth modes and it tells me, and it also tells me my lens. Alrighty. Um, I'm gonna make a mini tutorial, um, not a part of this video, about adding some uh, composition guides to this, um, but you might be able to figure it out yourself, um, but uh, if you can't and you do want that, then have a look out for that. Awesome.